My name is Alpesh Doshi, and I'm the laboratory director at the Center for Reproductive and Genetic Health. Today, I'm going to be talking about embryo biopsy for pre-implantation genetic diagnosis and pre-implantation genetic screening. The objectives of this lecture are going to be to discuss the pros and cons of polar body biopsy, cleavage stage embryo biopsy, and blastocyst biopsy. To talk about polar body biopsy, there are two methods reported in the literature, the sequential method and the simultaneous method. The sequential method relies on the aspiration of the first polar body within four hours of egg collection or oocyte retrieval. The second polar body can be aspirated between 12 to 16 hours post ICSI. The advantage of this technique is that there is better integrity of the polar bodies as we know they do fragment very quickly and may give an inaccuracy in genetic diagnosis. However, there is an extra manipulation involved and there is more stress to the resulting oocyte or embryo. The simultaneous method reported in the literature relies on one manipulation after performing the microinjection, i.e. the ICSI. In that one manipulation, you perform a single opening at between 12 and 16 hours post ICSI, and in that single manipulation, aspirate both the first and second polar body out of the opening made. This has one less manipulation and potentially may reduce the stress through the oocyte. The most uh, commonly performed methodology for polar body biopsy in terms of making the opening is using the laser to make the opening. In the olden days, three-dimensional aspiration methods were used by making a slit with a beveled pipette. However, with modern laser systems, it is very practical and very quick to make an opening with a laser system, giving you a completely reproducible performance every time. No acid tyrodes can be used for this procedure as acid affects the pH of the media and at this stage the oocytes can be very sensitive to pH changes. Once the opening has been made, the polar body can be aspirated via the opening made. Moving on to cleavage stage embryo biopsy. Two methods that this process relies on. Firstly, zona drilling, which can be made mechanically by using a beveled sharp pipette and making a three-dimensional slit in the zona pellucida, or as discussed, using a laser to make a bigger opening than polar body biopsy. The opening for this particular uh, stage of biopsy would be around 20 to 25 microns. Once the opening has been made, Conventional micromanipulators can be used to aspirate the cells pneumatically using air-controlled or hydraulically controlled syringes. The problems with cleavage stage biopsy reported are mosaicism, whereby each cell can demonstrate a different genetic complement, or compaction in the embryo leading to more difficulty in biopsying the cells. However, this has been overcome by using calcium-magnesium-free media. Laser drilling has most commonly been used to make opening in the zona pellucida for all stages of biopsy, right from polar body to blastocyst. We use a compact diode laser which is non-contact, of course. This creates a groove in the zona pellucida and multiple shots give you the opportunity of making the size of the hole that is desired. The benefits of this system are that you get complete reproducibility with every shot of laser applied. The drawbacks of the system being that it is very expensive and requires regular calibration and servicing. The other concern could be the potential heat damage from the laser. Once the opening has been made, the cells have to be aspirated. Within the opening, the single opening that has been made, a pipette which is around 30 to 35 microns in internal diameter is progressed to the blastomere and by gentle suction 
Using a micromanipulator, micro the cell is aspirated out of the embryo. You need excellent control at this stage, and any kind of abruptness in micromanipulation can lead to cell lysis. Moving on to blastocyst or trophectoderm biopsy. The zona drilling can be performed on day 3, day 4 or day 5 of embryonic development depending on the choice of the lab and the operator. The biopsy itself is performed on day 5 or day 6 of embryonic development when ideally some trophectoderm cells are herniating out of the opening. At this stage, the embryo should have differentiated between inner cell mass and trophectoderm. As discussed, the ideal scenario is when some trophectoderm cells are herniating through the opening and through this opening some aspiration is applied on the herniated trophectoderm and a laser or a sharp beveled pipette is used to excise the cells which are required. So as discussed, the opening can be made either at the cleavage stage embryo on day 3 or day 4 or just before performing the trophectoderm biopsy on day 5 or day 6. The advantage of performing it on day 5 being that you have a good indication of where the inner cell mass is and hence try to avoid making an opening on that particular site. However, the drawback being that you can collapse the blastocelic cavity and the embryo can totally collapse even if herniation was present to begin with. So thank you. That was my short presentation on embryo biopsy and I hope that was informative.